Elijah on verse 13 and get hung up on him. My Lord, I might get up here and do the rabbit dance. Have any of y'all seen me do the rabbit dance yet? I, uh, since I got this broke leg, I've been doing I used to do the rabbit dance after I was here when I was a little boy. They used to get me to do the rabbit dance. I, was, I, I won the contest on the rabbit dance. Thank you, Jesus. And I can still do it. But I, I, and I didn't forget it. I tell you, God, look here. Verse 14 of 9 Mark. When he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. You know, people that get, they'll see people that go to church and, and you know, and then they'll go up and try to, especially if they're against that church, try to find out something, another, that they were trying to find out something against Jesus. You know, they had him about everything, but he never was none of it. Immediately after the people, when they beheld him, was greatly amazed, running to him, saluting him. He asked the scribe, Why question you with them? One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought to you my son, which have a dumb spirit, wherein he taken him and he tears him and he foams, gnashed with his teeth. And I've seen that. And stiffens out a prince away. And I spoke to your disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. You know, Jesus taught his disciples. And this wasn't the day before he went to Calvary either. You, you read over in John 13 and 14 and 15. He taught us that he's the vine. And that we the branches. Didn't he? And we are to bring forth fruit. Every branch in me that maybe that's why well, that some of these preachers are disappearing. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes it away. I mean, notice there ain't many preachers there used to be. And I'm not, you know, I wish the, the woods is full of them. They used to say the woods is full of preachers. That was the old saying. Tell us. Thank you, Jesus. He asked him, the scribes, who question you with them? Otherwise, you know, people get behind. I've had them do that. They, uh, people get healed in these meetings and they try to read them right here in Macon. Try to get out there and try to uh, uh, make them doubt it or uh, didn't believe it. There are people out there like that, but I don't want to be in their shoes. One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought to you my son, which have a dumb spirit, wherein he taken him and tears him, and he foams and gnashes with his teeth, stiffens out a prince away. And I spoke to your disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. See, this is all of his disciples, his followers. Some people say they, uh, Jesus answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring here to me. It's God's will. How long is God going to suffer with this church that's in existence right now in this country? Amen. Did you know Christianity is down to 24%? That was in January of this year. Since this president's been up yonder, six years. The Bible said when the wicked rule, sin takes over. Sin takes over. You get an atheist. They got, they just elected an atheist as one of our governors in one of our states and a lesbian confessed lesbian and an atheist saw it on the news we need revival people you and I that still got this 
vision. We need to get out here and, and you know, we call this the highways and hedge. You don't see many of these tent meetings anymore. Back when I come up, they used to, uh, old storefronts when, you know, some of them stores that go out of business when the malls started coming in. You know, the, they had a lot of stores that was empty. I remember Villa Ricker, there was one, and, and down here, uh, at the Douglasville and, and, and Bremen, Georgia, they was coming up, people going out and these preachers, had preachers everywhere, going to open up church, and some of them uh, from those uh, uh, convenience stores went on to uh, churches. I mean, talking about holiness churches. Now, I never seen no Baptists in them places, but uh, they might have been, of course, when I got become a holy roller, they didn't want me no more. They used to make fun of me. I said, well, I, while y'all talking about, I said, while you're trying to shout in them, I roll over. You call me a holy, I roll into heaven. You ain't going to stop me from being a holy roller. If I have to roll into heaven, I'm going to roll into heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus answered and said, oh, you faithfully. You know, God, oh, you people without faith, what he's saying. We need something to happen to our faith. Did you know Jesus said, Mark 11, faith as a grain of mustard seed can move a mountain. Some of you might may have a CD or, or where I was out children in the West. Years and years ago, you know, in Arizona and New Mexico, done all them states, from one up to Canada, that way, Washington, had big meetings in Washington. Anyway, I was preaching on faith and I run up on a group of people over there, where all the mountains was, and and I was preaching about how Jesus said faith as a grain of mustard seed would move a mountain. You always got a hypocrite hanging around. If he has to hide behind the door or go get behind the curtain. If you got God and got the Holy Ghost moving you're going to have somebody in there that this ain't there for no good but to find fault. There's 30 people. They'll guarantee there be, might be 29 got the Holy Ghost, but there'll be one out there that ain't got it. If everybody in the world don't believe in Jesus, I still believe in Him. Nobody could never take that back when I was 11 years old. 17 operations all together and 11 of them on my leg. Lost my right leg. Bone cancer. Stayed in the hospital six solid years. Don't remember seeing my mom. She said she came once, but it was probably one of them times I was in a coma. I don't remember it, but stayed there six years and they sent me home to die. And on Easter Sunday... That fall in October when cotton picking time came in Alabama. She used to leave me there at the house by myself. I had a little brother who worked in the gardens. He was older than me. And he was to check on me. One evening about 2 or 3 o'clock a man came to my bed and stood at the foot of my bed on that little hospital bed and said, I'm Jesus and I've come to heal you. Right, get on. God created this right leg of mine and restored it. And I had a hang leg down about two or three inches or four inches below my knee and mom wouldn't let him amputate. And I lost my knee. I also lost my jaw bone up here and my neck bone and I looked like somebody had just, a dog or something had tore me up. But that man, he called himself Jesus, stood there at my feet at the foot of the bed and said, I'm Jesus, I've come to heal you. Three times he spoke, I was divinely, supernaturally, 
healed. Leg recreated. And I appreciate the Lord taking all the scars off my neck and it left that part. I got one little scar right there. Just one little tad by my neck. Looked like a dog could just eat me up. But this man said his name. I've had people say, well, that wasn't Jesus. That was the devil. I've had preachers tell me that. that was, I said, well, if it was a devil, thank God for him. I was made whole. But it wasn't the devil. Because he didn't call himself the devil. He said, I'm Jesus. And when he, after I was healed, he said, be made whole. said, I got a work that you for do when you get older. That's why I'm here today. I got older, but not that much. <laughs> Hallelujah. He answered, said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. I want to tell you something. When all these religions fail, just bring him to Jesus. I don't care what your loved one's got, what your husband or wife's got, or what kind of a condition you are, bring it to Jesus. Jesus is still at the right hand of the Father saying, come unto me, all you that labor. Jesus is saying, come unto me. Jesus is saying, if any sick among you, get you some real preachers, some real elders. Don't get these elders today. Get you some elders. Holy Ghost feel elders. And pray for them. You can't, the elders don't do it. Get a hold of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Sister Terrell, boy, she'll pray. And he asked his father, how long ago is it since this came? He said, of a child. And often it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. You can do, can't do, or can do anything. Have compassion. We got a compassionate Savior. He cares. Peter said, cast all your cares in his epistle upon the Lord. For he cares for you. Matthew said, Come unto me, all you that labor under burden, heavy laden. Just don't think you can go on. I'll give you rest. But he's not talking about in a bed. He's not talking about in one of my chairs you lean back watching the Long Ranger and Tunnel or something else on TV. Think about it. He said, Come unto me, all you that labor. He's talking about, I'll give you spiritual rest. Physical rest. Rest from your sicknesses. Rest from your problems. And one thing about it, like that man I've been talking about, I saw him, he said, just give me a wee bit more. It just takes a wee bit faith. Just a wee willy bit. As a grain of mustard seed. Ain't that right? If you can believe all things are possible, told that parent of that child, and immediately the father of the child cried out, said with tears, Lord, I believe, help me. You know, some people will not confess the unbelief. Did you know unbelief is sin? Amen. Have you ever done something wrong and, and the Lord dare will you make it right and you wouldn't make it right and ask forgiveness? Well, why can't we confess our unbelief? Have faith and doubt not. You should not only say to this mountain, but you should to this fig tree or, or this or that. But you say to this mountain, be removed, and it shall obey you. If a mountain can be moved,
I tell this a lot, not a whole lot, but I was getting on a plane flying overseas from Miami, and a Portuguese lady was there getting on behind me, recognized me because when I was in Portuguese, she saw the miracles and at one time or another I've been to over 200 countries and she was in one of them Portuguese revivals and she was troubled and she pushed me in the back you probably heard this on some of the uh, the, the CDs or some ever have and she turned around and she said I heard her say in, in Portuguese I understood a, a little bit of that and I turned around and I heard her saying, the plane won't crash now, man of God on board. Amen. Turned around and looked at her and I thought, man, what's she saying that for? And she grabbed me and said, I'm so glad you're on this plane. Said I said, I was troubled about getting on this plane. I was warned to not get on this plane, but now I know nothing's going to happen. It was one of them 15 or 16 hour distance we got about eight or nine hours from where we was to go one of them giant engines fell off and we never knew it off of that plane and that pilot come on and he called into another country to land at an airport and he said we're going to have to change course he didn't tell us nothing we didn't feel nothing. He said, we need, we're going to turn it like we're going to refuel. And we turned in about a few hours we was in there, but we couldn't have made it that nine hours a ten. Got to the gate before he, we, he let us stand up. He said, we're going to be changing planes. said, one of them giant engines fell in the ocean out, Hunter. He said, it's a miracle that we got here. You know whose faith it was? A little woman that recognized me and I'm so glad she got on that plane. I'm so glad I preached in Portugal because her faith kept that plane from crashing because I was on board. Don't you think, God, I'm not, don't you put me in that position. I wouldn't have got on that plane. I didn't feel nothing about nothing. Now that's a miracle. I've told that a hundred a thousand times. That's how powerful faith is. Turn water to wine for a bunch of drunks. I mean wine bibbers. <laughs> Ferminated. Because the kind they were drinking said after we get well drunk we get the bad stuff but y'all say the best stuff after we got half drunk. That's the reason I know it was Ferminated. Ain't that powerful? Amen. And it's Jesus that I talk about. Some of us, I get tired of hearing you talk. Well, you just get tired. I'm going to talk about him anyway. <laughs> if you can't believe all things. He saw the mother did he move. He said, if you can believe all things are possible to them that believe. Me, the father of the child, cried out with tears and said, Lord, I believe help my unbelief. And then here come the running of the people. Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. Talking about someone else. And when he saw coming unto him to the man's house, that was the kind of faith. This was a leader that had a servant, like a slave, we would call him, working for him. And he was a good man. And he wanted Jesus. Jesus spoke the word. And when the man got home, the man was out doing work. You remember that? Find it in this chapter. God said all things are possible. Jesus said unto them, Have faith in God, verily say unto you, that you sh shall say to this mountain, Be removed. I tried it out yonder where all the mountains are in, in the west to prove to a bunch of people that was fighting me. I got on my knees and asked God to move a mountain out to a half a mile. 
to prove to the people I was preaching the truth. And I told them, I said, while everybody's asleep, be sure you cut your TV on at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's when Walter Conkright and Dan Rather was coming on. He was training Dan Rather. And, uh, and I said, you're going to, it's going to be on the CBS News that this mountain moved a half a mile. They did. The next morning, that mountain moved one half a mile. And they said it was a mystery. But it was to show that people, I'm telling them, the mountains of uh, New Mexico, the mountain of Arizona, that, uh, that faith still can move a mountain. I remember I was in Waco, Texas. And somebody, they were having communion. Somebody for, forgot to bring the, the, not the wine, because we didn't use wine, but we used that, uh, some kind of a, a special juice, you know. There for wine, it looked like, you know, I guess that would make wine, or what you call that, ra not raspberry, but some kind of a juice. And somebody forgot it, and we had over 15,000 people. And we had two drums of water. They had two drums of water. I asked them to fill them up. Now, God, kill me if I ain't telling the truth. And, and it was on a, a Sunday or Saturday evening. And they filled them drums up with water. I went up there and bowed my head. I said, check it. Now, God, kill me right now if I ain't telling you the truth. We had over 400 preachers there with communion plus other people. I stood over that drum. Three or four of those drums, 50-gallon 50, drums of water. Prayed. And God turned that water to wine for us to have that communion. Not because I've got such a faith, but to show them people he's still up there. Yeah. Still up there. Thank you, Jesus. A man come right up one of these platforms, high breeze ramp from Birmingham, Alabama, with crutches on in his arm. And I didn't know, I thought the guy was crippled. But he had this leg amputated over here. And, and he just got his new leg that day. Of course, stupid me. Then asked him, and he grabbed his crutches and beat him after and had them uh, metal uh, deals here. Aluminum pipes. Beat that man's crutches all to pieces and slap my hand on him and tell him Jesus Christ has made your leg whole. And he wasn't even standing there for that. I said, go over yonder. Take your shoe off and check it. And he went over there and God turned that artificial leg into a real leg. When he came back up there, and had about 15 people that come up and bear witness that that was the truth. I didn't pray for nobody else. I left the platform with about 10,000 people. I said, I'd be back <laughs> tonight, but I can't pray for nobody else. Man, I am shook up. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. God, God. He ain't lost no power. I tell you, the church had lost power. People are not tarrying like we used to have to for the Holy Ghost. He said, tarry till you be what? Endure with what? What kind of power? From own word. High. This kind of power don't come down here. It, 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 on earth. It, it comes down from heaven. And you can move mountains. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. I got the best, sweetest little wife in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Man, when I saw her, my heart jumped in my mouth by bowel. And I thought I was choking. But she looked so young. Tell me about a month or so. I was preaching down at Brother Ford's church down there where he pastors down yonder. And I was preaching about what was happening now. That we're going to move everybody all the all, That rooster up yonder and, and uh, that crouch fella that died, all that bunch was predicting the world would end as a clock turned over 2,000. Publicly, they was doing it. And other preachers, tell them folk, bring, make sure you get out yonder, you Christians, sell what you got, bring it in here. And said the, the people that misses the rapture, they'll take it up from there. That was their doctrine. I'm glad you don't hear nothing about them people no more. Deceiving people. I remember that everybody was, they believed him. Everybody, boy, they was uh, sending all their money in there. Willing their homes. <laughs> I said, I see y'all in the morning. Everybody said, uh, and, and I was a sister and I was in Australia. And they believed it over there. Called he and went over there. These people that was friends of ours, we went, they want us to go to their house and be set down when the rapture takes place. I said, I will go separate, y'all, but ain't no rapture gonna take place. <laughs> I said, fact about it. We're about 19 hours, 18, 19 hours behind over here where he and he is. And I said, if a rapture took place, this done happened. But I ain't heard nothing about it because you got seven different time zones. What midnight he's talking about? I may be crazy, but I've got a little more sense than that. And boy, well, they was holding hands, you know. Over there, they had a house full of holding hands. I was laughing at them. I said, I see y'all right to midnight. I'll pray, but I ain't holding no hands for no rapture. I said, I'll tell you what, some of y'all are fixing to do. Y'all are fixing to get ruptured here. Now, I have had one of them. <laughs> Hallelujah! Well, they sat there about 10, 15 minutes.